Welcome to your program, Jeremiah 2911, with your host, Dr. Marisol Pelzer and Reverend Dexter Pelzer. Amen. What a blessing to be here with you today. Amen. And, you know, it is such a wonderful time. Oh, I'm just so blessed, you know, and, and I want to talk to you about falling in love. Amen. You know, I remember when I fell in love with my husband. <laughs> And I got engaged, and I got a ring, and I got married, and we, we were just puppy love. And I think we're still in puppy love, you know? Because <laughs> every day I love him more and more and more, you know? Amen. And I want to equate that with the Lord. And when you first get saved, yep. and when you first become the bride of Christ, the joy that you have and the love that you have for him and the passion and the seal, you know, yep. it is so amazing. And, and I want to read you a scripture in Isaiah 61, verse 10. It says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. Wow, the most biggest miracle you can ever receive is your salvation. Amen. And arrayed me with a robe of righteousness. Hallelujah. Has a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest and has a bride adorns herself with her jewels. And you know, as time goes on and you're married, you know, you begin to take some people they lose that seal and they lose that passion. And it's so important that we return to that first love with the Lord. That's right. And, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And I find that very passionate and very important because how do you keep that love? How do you keep that passion? I got saved when I was in high school, Dexter. And now I'm a lot older. I have gray <laughs> hairs to prove it. A lot, a lot older. And I mean, over 40 years ago. And I think, wow, the Lord has been so faithful. And I want to remain in that first love. You know, when I first got to know the Lord Jesus and I went to Bible school, I used to get in the back of a truck and I used to scream, little boy, Jesus loves you, you know? And I just wanted to tell everybody Jesus loved them yep. because I was walking in that first love. And we are called to stay in that love and in that passion. And so that's exciting, the topic. So before we begin, I want to pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you, Lord, and we just welcome the Holy Spirit. Amen. We just welcome him, Father. And Lord, I just thank you that today we're going to learn about how to remain in that first love. So that we are just in the honeymoon with our Father and our Savior, Christ Jesus, and with the Holy Spirit. That we might come to know Him and follow Him in the power of the resurrection. And serve Him and, and stay faithful. And, and, and serve Him and be obedient to Him because we love Him so much. Because He first loved us. And I just thank you that you're going to use Dexter in a mighty way and that your Holy Spirit is going to speak to him. And Father, all the honor, all the glory is for the, Holy, for the Father, for Jesus, and for the Holy amen. Spirit. And we just welcome you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank you, Marisol. Well, brothers and sisters, we just welcome you and love you. And, um, <clears throat> and what greater topic than the command in the scriptures to return to your first love. Um, and you know, many times the scriptures tell us to do something, there is a reason for that. Because that means that we can fall away from our first love of the Lord. As Marisol said, when we first find him and discover him and are forgiven, we feel the weight of that guilt and shame lifted off of us by the blood of the Lamb who forgives us of all of our sins. And we experience the joy of the Lord as the Holy Spirit fills us. There is nothing like it. I still remember Marisol ran through a field when she got baptized with the Holy Spirit and how I was just so excited. I was running around outside too. It's just indescribable the joy of the Lord when you know that you know you know 
that the Lord is with you, that you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior. And the Word of God says even the Holy Spirit witnesses to you to confirm your salvation. So there should be no uncertainty in accordance with the Word of God. We should know that we know that we know that we're saved. But then once we're saved, it is possible, because of the Word of God went warned against this, for us to fall back away from the Lord and fall back into the world and let our flesh take over and go back into the worldly things from where, whence we came. And yet the word of God says, when you come to Jesus, Jesus said this himself, and you put your hand to the plow, he who looks back, in other words, to your old life, and wants that and desires it is not worthy of the kingdom. Even Lot, when he left Sodom and Gomorrah with his wife, his wife was told, don't look back, as Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. And yet she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. God is pretty serious when he says, when you come to me, you deny yourself, you take up your cross and follow me, you don't go back. You don't go back to the vomit. There are so many words in the word of God. Don't return to the vomit. Don't return to your old lifestyle because you are a new creation in Christ. You were born new. You are a new creation. You were reborn in Christ. And as such, it is beautiful. So when we come to that point where we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the question is, how do we keep that zeal of the Lord, that passion for God, for seeking him, for knowing him, that Paul talks about, where he says, there's nothing more important in my life than knowing Christ and Christ crucified. Nothing more important. Paul's whole thing in his life was to know Christ more intimately. And when the word of God speaks of us having fellowship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then we start to get the secret of how do we keep that first love we keep in that intimate fellowship. And we find that fellowship with the Father, with the Son, and with the Holy Spirit. I know that's hard to imagine, but, I've, but we've experienced that. You can have fellowship like we are right here and like we do at our dinner table with friends. You can have fellowship with the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. And I'm talking about an intimate fellowship. And I'm talking about a holy God, Jesus, who came down to this earth and made himself man. And I'm talking about that God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit to intimately reside inside of us. And if you don't think you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit who resides in us, one with our spirit, then I'm not sure we understand what that word means. So in order to keep that passion for Christ, that passion for the Lord, and that earnest desire to know him deeper and more intimately, there are things the scripture shows us to do. But first, I want to just go to the commands to return to your first love so you see where that comes from. Turn to Revelation 2, verses 4 and 5. <clears throat> now, this is one of my favorite parts of Revelation, is that Jesus Christ, through John, the revelator, wrote seven letters to seven different churches. And, and it's one of the most astonishing things to me because we get to see Jesus' perspective of the churches after they've been formed and have been operating for years and years. Because most people believe this happened when John was like, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, 70, 80 years old. He was pretty old at that time. And he's the only apostle that we believe was not actually martyred for Christ. They tried to. They put him in boiling water and they did other things, but the Lord protected him through all that. But here it is. The letter, Jesus is actually writing to the churches, telling them what he's seen, what they need to repent from, what they're doing good, what they're doing bad. And it's remarkable because we actually get to see what the Lord thinks of us as a church. And so when I read these, these are like super important to me of what the Lord is saying to us. So to the angel of the church of Ephesus, <clears throat> I'll actually start with Revelation 2, 1. So you get a flavor of, First he compliments them, and then he tells them what they need to repent of. He says, to the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. This is, of course, Christ. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. Hmm. There's something to make you stop right there. Do you know the definition of love in 1 Corinthians 13 is that you do not bear iniquity? You do not condone it, you do not bear it, and that includes in the body of Christ. Let that sink in today if you're a shepherd over the body of Christ or an elder. 
that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. So they are doing good works for the name's sake of Christ, and they have not grown weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. <clears throat> wow. So they're lacking in their personal relationship with the Lord. Yeah, they, because Marisol, and we know this, and I know this from my past before I really found the Lord as a prodigal son returned, that you can just get caught up in the church and just doing things and forget about Jesus, that our, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author or perfecter of our faith, and, and knowing him intimately and having fellowship with him, you can lose sight of that and just go through the motions of being a good moral Christian. And that is, that is what this word is saying. You are doing good works, but you are not doing them. Being attached to the vine, through the vine, or abiding in Christ. So above all, Jesus wants us to have a deep and sincere love for him personally a deep connection to him, an intimate relationship with him. Because we are his sons and daughters. He, we are his family. And as such, the word of God even says if he, he could have the rocks do works or cry out if he needs to. He doesn't need us to do works for him. We are created to good works unto him, yes. But that, he doesn't need us to. What he calls us to is believing in him as our savior that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins and with all of our heart giving ourselves to him as our Lord to deny ourselves take up our cross and follow him that's what Romans 10 9 and 10 is when it says what is salvation that you confess that he's your Lord and that you believe with all your heart that God raised him from the dead so your heart has to be involved in this. Your heart cannot, cannot be an intellectual belief. It must enter your heart. Love is of the heart. When he said you left your first love, that means he's talking about your heart. So, and I love this in verse five. So he's just said, um, you have left your first love. And then he says, remember. So this is really important in our own lives. Always remember. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. So he's always saying, look inside of ourselves. Put a mirror up in ourselves and remember where we came from. Remember the glory of the day of salvation, how you felt. Remember where you came from. And then remember how you have fallen. In other words, what caused you in this earth, in this world, to take your loving eyes off of Jesus and put them on other things in the world? Remember from where you have fallen. Examine it. Look into it. That's why I love the prayer in Psalm 139, 23, and 24, because we're inviting the Lord, even if we can't see it ourselves, to show it to us, Marisol. So we're called to renew our love for him and our obedience for him on a daily basis. We're yeah. called to grow and grow and grow and seek and, and, and just get to know him better, like a marriage couple. That's we right. know each other better every day. That's right. And we love each other more every day as we go through trials, to victories, through life. He's supposed to be like a partner with you in your life through everything. Through everything. Nothing should be done separate from the Lord, Marisol. Even the, work, the Word of God says, even do your work unto the Lord with all your heart. Even as you work in your job, do it unto the Lord. Not unto man, not unto this or that, but unto the Lord. And so that's why I love Psalm 139, 23, and 24, which is a prayer for you to open up because that's what God always asks you. Come to him even if you're not sure what's going on in your life. And, and this prayer is simple. Search me, O God, and know my heart. There it is. Where does love come from? The heart. Try me and know my very thoughts. And see if there is any wicked or sinful way in me and if there is, lead me out of that into the way everlasting. See, what you're doing is inviting God to show you 
if you have fallen from your first love when you pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. And I can assure you, when you have your heart's desire to come back to your first love, you will come back to it, and he will help you get back to him because you've asked him to in accordance with that prayer. So when it says, remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, we need to know from where we fell what caused us to stop loving him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and start loving other things over him. And, you know, when you remember how he saved you, how he saved you, that's critical. And then also you have to build walls of remembrance. Yep. You know, think back of all the things he's done for you and all the trials he's helped you conquer and all the things he's done and and take time to go back and think of those things and be thankful for that because that gives you wow it cements you to him gives you a solid foundation to be you know in 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 spanish we used to sing parate parate la roca stand on the rock Yep. And who's the rock? Christ Jesus. That's right. Because when you're standing on him, you're, you're founded, you're grounded. And, you know, the little song would say, don't stand on, on the sand because sand moves. Yep. You have to be steadfast. That's right. And how do you, you stay steadfast knowing the authority you have in Christ, acknowledging how he saved you and all the things that, He's delivered you from all the miracles, all the blessings. He helps you to keep on and finish the race. Because it's not how you begin, it's how you end. How you finish, that's right. The Word of God is very clear. It's not how you start the race, it's how you finish the race. Mm -hmm. So then he simply says, repent and do the first work. So glory be to God. That's what I love about his grace. He just asks you to acknowledge this and repent and go back to your first love. So, Father, if we have put anything in our lives before you, we repent of that in the name of Jesus. We ask you to uncover it, show us, and lead us in the way everlasting back to our first love because we choose you above all other things in Jesus' name. And you watch what he starts doing in our lives. And so the foundation, though, of your first love and what the word of God commands as far as our love for God is in Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 9. So if, if you turn to that, you see that this is not a part in, part out. This is not a, well, I love you a little, Lord, and I love the world a little. No, this is all in. This is total abandoned love for him. It says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And if that wasn't enough, with all your soul and with all your strength. That means what you put your time and effort into. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart, written on your heart. That's why we have hearts of clay. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house. Do you understand? This is not just a casual thing on Sundays. This is a a lifestyle. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Last thing before you go to bed is, I love you, Lord. Read the word. First thing when you get up is talk to the Lord. Talk about loving him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets before your eyes. They would actually wear this square thing right there. (laughs) You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So I think this is pretty important. Everywhere you look, your hand... Here, your gates, you walk in your home. What does it say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Remember then from whence you have fallen. Remember and come back to your first love. This is not a intellectual love. This is a love from the depth of the heart. So whatever you love in this world, your mama, your papa, your children, your brother, your sister, it does not matter. That love should pale in comparison to our love for God. Pale. Be insignificant compared to that. Now, let's read another scripture that is in Revelation. Again, the letters to the churches, which shows how God sees when we aren't all in with this love. Um, And it's Luke, I'm sorry, it's Revelation chapter 3. 
verse 14. We're going to start, and this is, I'm going to read the whole letter because it's short, or at least most of it. The letter to the church of the Laodiceans, and it's Revelation 3, 14. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. This is Jesus speaking. Because you say, I am rich, I have become wealthy, I have need of nothing. In other words, the things of the world are satisfying you. And do not know that you are truly wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked in the spirit world. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eyes solved that you may see. This is God's love. He says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. How do I know this scripture? Well, because as a prodigal son returning back to the Lord, I was taken to heaven by an angel. And I was brought before Jesus Christ and he vomited me out of his mouth. Then the angel took me back down to the earth. It was one of the most horrible experiences I could ever imagine having. I had just got done studying Revelation and the letters to the churches, so I knew what that meant. It still took me months after that to recognize until I finally heard from the Lord and understood everything that happened. And the Lord actually spoke to me and said, you cannot serve me in the calling I have for you and be lukewarm. You either choose to be all in, on fire for me, in love with me, or all out. But it's your choice. So I chose to be all in. I mean radically all in, surrender my whole life, died to myself, crucify my flesh with Christ, deny myself, take up my cross and follow him. And I spoke those words of absolute, total abandonment and surrender to him for the rest of my life. Now, because of the grace of God as a prodigal son, you know what happens when you return, you come to your senses and you return, repent and return to the Father. What does the word of God say? The father in the prodigal son story in Luke throws his arms around the son as he's coming back. To, he runs out to him, throws his arms around him, and kisses him on the neck and throws kisses on him and welcomes him back as a full son. He puts the ring on his finger, the robe on him, his shoes, the belt, brings him back in as a full son. And we know the son said, I'm just going to come back as a servant because I'm unworthy. But God loved him fully back because he repented, said, I have sinned against heaven and against you, Father, and he returned. And it does not matter where we are in life, how badly we have sinned, I can guarantee you this, I was the worst sinners I know, you can always return to God. And that's the beauty of his grace. He simply says, return to me. With all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. So no matter where you are in your life, even if you've fallen away from your first love, there is a place you can flee to, and that is back to the Father's arms. And he will always lovingly accept you. And, and Marisol, you know, the name of our program is Jeremiah 29, 11, So I can't help but read 11 through 14, because let's listen what the Lord promises when you run to his arms. When you seek him with all your heart, let's see what he promises he will do for each one of us. And there is no exception. There is no man or woman that is treated differently than another. When the word of God says he will do something, he will do it for everyone. It says, Jeremiah 29, 11, and it's going to be in the last verse here. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans for a hope and for a future. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And listen to this, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord. 
And then he goes on and says, I will bring you back from your captivity. As a prodigal son, I know the truth of these words now. When you seek him with all your heart and you truly repent, you come to the end of yourself like the prodigal son did in the pigsty with nothing left in life. Me, I was living in a barn with nothing left in life. When you come to that point and you turn towards God and repent and then seek him with all your heart, he promises you'll find him. You're looking for your Savior, he promises you'll find him. <laughs> with joy. And the word of God, this is what amazes me. And I've seen this when we've, we've had people do this. The word of God says that the ain't, there is more joy in heaven over one repentant sinner that returns to God than over a hundred righteous. And that the angels in heaven rejoice over that one repentant sinner. All of heaven rejoices. I mean, it's like, it's amazing to me. The glory of heaven that someone has returned in the loving arms of the Father, all in. So when I had that dream, now you can understand how to me this is like really serious. This is not a game. I'm either all in or I'm all out. I'm not gonna straddle the fence. That's an expression we have, straddle the fence, try to be on both sides. I love the things of the world, I love the things of God. I wanna keep my friends in the world and I wanna have my friends in God. No, no. You see, when you understand the scriptures, you cannot love the things of the world and love the things of God. It says you cannot, Jesus says you cannot. You'll either love one or hate the other, or love the other and hate that one. You cannot love them both. That's the word of God. Is it worth it? Hallelujah. I just, one of the greatest gifts in Marisol, you know this, I mean, the joy that I had when I came to the Lord and then he washed me clean and took all that guilt and shame away from me. And, and I just have to read that to you because I just want you to, to know the power of the joy of the Lord and how this can sustain you of, of giving your all to Jesus. It says in Hebrews 9, 14, that the blood of the lamb, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanses your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Do you understand all my past, all my shame was cleansed and washed clean by the blood of the lamb. And he repeats it again in, in Hebrews 10, 22. He says, let us draw near to God with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. You see, coming to him all in, and when I did, I remember praying these words to the Lord God Almighty. And why? Because the accuser of the brethren, Satan, was accusing me every day that I lost my salvation. I had sinned too greatly as a prodigal son against God and I was gone, forget it. And I was horribly miserable. So I read these words in the word of God and I prayed them back to the Father. I said, Father, if this is true, I ask for this to be true in my heart. I ask that, the, that this guilt and shame be taken away in accordance with the word of God by the precious blood of the lamb. Do you know that very afternoon I prayed that prayer a prophet came with a basin of water, actually an empty basin, came in and said, may I pray for you, the Lord sent me. And I, I knew this prophet, so I said, yes. Well, they filled up the basin with water, had me take off my shoes and my socks and washed my feet. And as they washed my feet, I'll never forget this miracle. It said, as far as the east is from the west, so far are your sins removed from the father, Father's memory and from your memory from this day henceforth. You are washed clean. And as God is my witness, that guilt and shame left me has never come back. This is years ago. So when you come to Jesus and you come to your first love and you understand what it's like to be washed clean and not have that guilt and shame that you have to carry, just as one example of what it's like to be in his loving arms, there's no way you turn back. And if you have turned back, as I had, stupidly as a prodigal son, the good news is he'll always bring you back into this family if you simply repent and come back to him and seek him with all your heart. And he promises you will find him. He says, I will be found by you when you seek for me with all your heart. Don't give up. No matter how badly you messed up, and I guarantee you I haven't messed up as badly as I had. That's the grace of God. That's what I mean by first love. So the word of God is amazing. 
Because I can tell you this. It says, he who is forgiven much loves much. So for me, my salvation is so precious that I am forgiven of so much that I tell the Lord, and he knows this, that if I have all eternity to thank him for my salvation and my mama's salvation, that's another story, it will not be enough time. All of eternity will not be enough time to thank him for that. To me, that's first love, and I don't ever want to lose that. Do you know when the disciples came back and they did, the 72 were sent out two by two, 72 disciples, and they were casting out demons and healing the sick, and they came back and saying, even the demons had a, how to obey our word when we cast them out. What did Jesus say to them? Rejoice not that the demons had to obey your word, but rejoice that you're, of your salvation, that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. So when, I, when the word says, Marisol, remember, we need to remember from whence we came. And we need to remember what it's like to be washed clean. We need to remember what it's like to have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. And we need to get back to that every day. And does that take work or does that take time? Remember, love the Lord your God with all your strength, <laughs> strength heart, and mind. Strength means you've got to put some effort into it. Yeah, but is it worth it? Absolutely. So first love and being on fire for the Lord. That's beautiful in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> so, so Marisol, what can divert us from the love of God, right? Nothing. <laughs> well. You know, but we, if we stay focused on him, nothing. But we cannot allow the enemy to come and distract us. You know, doesn't the Apostle Paul says, guard your salvation with trembling? Fear and trembling. Actually, yeah. fear and trembling, yes. Right. He does. So we got to stay focused. Lord, what do I need to change today? Yeah. What do I need to grow in today to keep seeking him, to yeah. keep being intimate with him? Because the blessings of yesterday were yesterday's blessing, but you need to get today's blessings, today's anointing, today's download from him. Yeah, because when you sit at his feet, you will get New his things. loving instructions for your life, right? Every day. That's right. Every day, you know, because every day, it's like every day we need to drink water, we need to eat food. And with him, if we want to stay healthy spiritually, every day we need that download of that flowing water and that new spiritual food, you know. I, and I love the story of Martha and Mary. Yeah. You know this story. And, and brothers and sisters, you know it. But it's just beautiful how Jesus makes these profound illustrations and demonstrations in the Word and make sure they were recorded for us. As you well know, Martha was running around preparing a meal for Jesus and the disciples, which is a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. But Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to every word which Jesus spoke. Mary was a radical lover, and Martha loved Jesus too. You need to understand that, because the Word of God says that. And Jesus loved them all greatly. The Word says that. That Jesus loved Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Remember, Lazarus was a brother who died that Jesus raises from the dead. He loved them. The Word says that. And they loved him. But Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him. Every word he spoke. And remember what Jesus said to Martha. Martha complained. He said, Jesus, make, make Mary get up and help me prepare the meal. And Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you will worry about so many things. But Mary has chosen the better part. And what she has chosen will not be taken away from her. She chose to sit at Jesus' feet. Jesus was demonstrating something so important. In order to have an intimate relationship with him, you need to sit at his feet and listen to every word he speaks to you, directly or through the Holy Spirit. It matters not, because it's the Spirit of Christ. But he, you need to sit at his feet and adore Lee and listen to every word he speaks. You know, again, you know, there's the Lord uses that metaphor, you know. And and I just want to nail it to the wall. You know, it's like it's like a one you know, when you come to know the Lord Jesus, you become his bride, right? Yep. So in the natural world, when a young woman chooses to get married to a young man, 
she, her life completely changes. She no longer does the things that she used to do. She's, you know, she's now a housewife. Her responsibilities change. She has to spend quality time with her husband. She has to take care of the house. She has to cook. She cannot be single anymore. You know, you can have, so, so when you come to know the Lord, you are now married to Him. So you have to nurture your relationship with Him, get to know Him, what He likes, what He doesn't like, praise Him, worship Him, spend one-on-one -on -one time with Him so that He can speak to you, guide your life. You cannot just say, He's my Lord and put Him on a shelf. He has to be the center of every part of your life, the center of your marriage, the center of everything, everything. He is the core of everything. You cannot just go visit him on Sunday morning at church. He has to be with you 24-7 in your life, in your work, as you're driving, That's right. as you discipline your children, in your business, at the bank, everywhere, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and that, that's what it takes to know him and to follow him in the power of the resurrection. Amen. Yeah. And like Marisol, just a simple example, what's the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning? What do I do? Put on the worship music. Right. Not because it's religious, because it's a joy for me to sing to the Lord as I take my shower, to be honest. <laughs> I'm probably sharing too much here. But, uh, I mean, I love singing unto the Lord and hearing worship music. It's just, I go in the car, what's the first thing I turn on? Either a teaching of the Lord or worship music. It's just, it's what I've chosen and what I love. And, and I hope you don't separate those two. I've chosen it and I love it. I love singing unto the Lord and, and you praising know, Him. And there was an example today, you know, um, we love the Clippers because we're not religious. You that's know, the local they, basketball team. Right, that's the local basketball team. And as they were yeah. playing, I was like, thank you, Lord, they're going to win. And I was, you know, and, and I was like, thank you, Lord Jesus, that the Clippers won. I even said, thank you for him, for giving me the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. And then one of the players was hurt with his Achilles. Chris Paul. Chris mm -hmm. Paul, CP3. And you know what is so amazing? That he said, everything's going to be okay. Right. Because my mother, my grandmother first, my grandmother and, and my mother are praying for me. So everything's going to be okay. So everything's going to be okay. Yeah, I love that testimony. I love that testimony Amen. because it just shows that his trust is in God, that he knows who God is, and he is a professional basketball player. But he's not trusting in his, his ability. He's trusting in the Lord and that the prayers are answered. And it's amazing how it can impregnate every area of your life. That's right. You know? and, and I just thank him for everything. You know, because Amen. everything we have is his. That's right. So here we have a young man playing professional basketball who is his mom and grandmother are praying for him and and it's a blessing he's trusting God in every single area and we have a friend who's a professional boxer yep. and he in his testimony he says that the reason he lost one of the fights was because he had everything the Lord was in every area he but he told the Lord no I have this area under control I do the boxing but no God has every area of your life. He wants to invade it and bless you, but you have to open it to him. Amen. And Amen. he's a known heavyweight boxer and, and actually and what he said, Marisol, and I love it. God, you you have the moon, the stars, the heavens, you take care of them. Boxing, I got this covered, is what he said. And and the Lord tried, kept trying to get his attention that this next fight he was not to fight. And he just, he knew he heard from the Lord, but he, he just kept saying, and I love his testimony, he kept saying, Lord, you got, you're in charge of the heavens, the stars, the moon, all that, all that stuff. You got that, I got the boxing, I got it covered. Well, of course, 
he got beat in that match and hurt badly, and he couldn't even function. And, and then he, of course, he repented. Thank God. I'm so glad, Marisol, that God, even when he tells us something we disobey, he still gives us room to repent. And I'm so thankful for that. And he's a mighty man of God now who gives incredible testimonies, incredibly anointed, because he, does, he finally realized, I can't be straddling the fence. I can't give God the sun, the moon, the stars, and me take the things on this earth. That's unacceptable. I'm either all in or I'm not all in. And his testimony is beautiful about that. So he chose to be all in, and today he's a mighty man of God. What a beautiful brother in the Lord. And so I love that. So let's see what the scriptures say about that, because it's so tempting to love the things of the world and to think that we're in charge of them. Let's see what the, the scripture says in Matthew 6, 19. This is, of course, Jesus' teaching. He says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. None. Don't lay up any treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Nothing you do on earth, as far as treasures being a nice house, a nice car, whatever, a big bank account, invest, it does not matter. Don't lay up treasures on earth. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Such a truth. So when God says, come back to your first love, one of the greatest things that happens is that we get our jobs, we get our careers, we're successful, and we start to forget about God and think, we got this all figured out, our life's all good. I got a family, I got a house in the suburbs, I got a car, I got a bank account, I'm good, I'm covered, Lord. I don't need you anymore. Sound familiar? That's what happened to Jewish people over and over again. Every time they, God prospered them, they left him. And then he disciplined them. Well, guess what? Remember what the word says. I chasten and I discipline those whom I love. So if you want to lose everything like I did, Lord willing, that won't happen to you. For him to get your attention, for you to come back to your first love, you have that choice as I did. God, I wish I, I knew this truth back then. I could have saved myself a lot of misery, but I am so thankful that the Lord chastened me and disciplined me and allowed me to be all in with him. And showed me the importance of that in a supernatural way, bringing me heaven. And yes, vomiting me out, but I would never trade any of that for anything to be where I am today. In love with him. And then he says again, as if that's not enough, in Matthew 6, 24, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, mammon. <clears throat> so as a prodigal son, I love mammon. Yeah, I used to count my bank account every day. Such a fool. Well, you can't serve God and mammon. See, you're going to love one and hate the other. Isn't that, you, you want to talk about scary, I'm sorry. But if you love the things of the world and you love your money and everything, then do you realize you hate God? I didn't realize it. I had no clue. I do now. It's despicable what I was doing to God. For the word of God says, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. You cannot love him and not obey his commandments. You don't believe me? Read all of 1 John. It's repeated over and over again. In fact, I, th I see some of you are skeptical, so let's just turn to that. 1 John chapter 4. First John 4, <laughs> uh, we'll start with verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So remember, it's turning, telling us to return to our first love, so we're learning what love is. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. So first of all, we're learning 
the amazing love, what love really is, that he would send his only begotten son to die for us. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Um, and then he goes on and says, hmm. In 1 John 5, 3, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Huh. And in verse 2, it says, By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Over and over again, it says that if you love God, you keep his commandments. And his commandments are very simple. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two commandments repeated in 1 John. But he says, if you don't love God and you don't love your neighbor, then you are not of his kingdom. So love is what God defines it, which is loving the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loving your neighbor as yourself. By this we know that we are children of God. So Marisol, if I'm of the world, what do I love, right? The world. Right, and, and I can love my wife, right? Yeah. And even the word says that. You know, if you're of the world, you're going to love your family, right? But can you love your enemies? No. No. In fact, the word says that it's basically impossible to love your enemies. And yet, what does Jesus teach us? If you're of my kingdom, love your neighbor as yourself and love your enemies. Jesus said, a new commandment I give you to love your enemies and bless them. Even if they despitefully use you. you. Now, I can't love that way in the natural, right? Right. So what allows me to love supernaturally, this kind of love, where I can love the Lord when I go of all my heart, love my neighbor as myself, even my brothers and sisters in Christ, even when they do something wrong to me? What can cause, where can a supernatural love come from, Marisol? From God, because the Word of God says God is love. And then when you, when, you let the, when you know him and you follow him in the power of the resurrection, the power of the resurrection is the Holy Spirit. Yes. When you let the Holy Spirit dwell in you, and then you, you, let, you love people with the love of God that flows through you. Living not waters. In, living right. water, not in your own effort, right. but in the Lord. So it's supernatural. Supernaturally. It's agape love. Yes, it's uh -huh. a new higher standard of love. And so Marisol, in five, Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Holy Spirit or being filled with the Holy Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, yes. faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is it's no not. law. The law doesn't apply to you when you're led by the Spirit. Because when you're led by the Spirit and walking with the Spirit, and one with the Holy Spirit, these living waters flow out of you called the fruit of the Spirit. So if that's the fruit of the Spirit, and I'm commanded to love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and I'm commanded to love my neighbors as myself, and I'm commanded by Jesus himself to love my enemies, I cannot do it in my own strength. So I must believe in Jesus and Jesus says when you believe in me you will get the greatest gift besides your salvation which is the gift of the Holy Spirit Amen. and then this fruit of the Holy Spirit will flow through you as Jesus said in John rivers of living waters will flow out of your belly and touch everyone you touch supernatural love so that is the same kind of love I need even to love the Father that may kind of surprise you, but I don't want to love him with an imperfect love out of my flesh. I want to love him with the perfect love of the Holy Spirit. So I want to be led by the Holy Spirit, even to worship God in spirit. Why do you think it says my true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth? Because you're not worshiping out of the flesh. You're worshiping out of your Holy Spirit connected with your spirit as one in love and truth. In the same way, I want to love him in all things. And so, even this is kind of repeated in Colossians 3. I, I love the way the word describes God's love. 3.12, it says, um, 
Colossians 3, 12 through 17. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. Remember, in 1 John it says, if you don't love your neighbor, then you are not loving God. There's no separation. But above all things, put on love, verse 14. Marisol, but above all things, put love. on love, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, what you were talking about earlier, giving thanks in all things. Above all these things put on love, which is the bond of perfection, for love covers a multitude of sins. In other words, if you love, no matter what happens to you, you can forgive. And when you can forgive, you won't have that weight on you. It will be lifted off you and you will walk in peace and joy all the days of your life. So Marisol, return to your first love. Right? And you can't do it in your own strength. You cannot love God as he is worthy to be loved in your own strength. So you have to make a choice and then you have to seek him with all your heart. And it's not a one-time thing, Marisol, right? This is a journey until the end. That's why Paul said, it doesn't matter, you know, it doesn't matter how he started the race. He said, I, I want to finish the race and finish it well and receive the crown. And the same crown that he will receive, he will then put it at the feet of Jesus and thank him as an act of worship and praise. I don't know about you, but I want to finish the race madly in love with Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I want to be able to lay those crowns at his feet with joy in my heart. And I want to hear, as Paul said, he, he wanted to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. You know, I, I think it was Bob Jones, you know, when he almost died years ago, it was probably 30 years ago. Um, he, he did die, he went to heaven, but he was, he was um, brought back to life through the prayers of people. But when he went to heaven, the first thing the Lord, Lord Jesus said to him is, did you learn how to love? Amen. Very simple question for Bob Jones. Well, he, he gave him another 30-something years to come back. He's a great prophet in the body. And he learned how to love. But that was the first thing, and really, as far as I remember, the main thing that Jesus said to him, did you learn how to love? Do you, have you learned how to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength? And if you haven't, you just have to seek him and seek that love with him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And you will find him and you will find that love with him. You will find that fellowship with him. Because he says, I will be found by you. He will make himself real to you. And you will never be the same when he reveals himself to you fully. I was never the same. Marisol. Never the same when Jesus revealed himself to me. And when the Holy Spirit filled me and I ran around outside singing songs in the Spirit, I was never the same. Amen. Right? You'll never be the same. But you must accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And then he will fill you with the most beautiful gift of all, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And with that gift of the Holy Spirit, you will learn how to love. Amen. Because supernaturally, the Holy Spirit will pour that love out of you as living waters. Everywhere you go, that's returning to your first love. So Marisol, <clears throat> there's a, a prayer in Psalm 119 that I love. <laughs> Almost everything I pray is out of the Word of God. Because remember, brothers and sisters, all the promises of our God are yea in Christ. 
And but before we 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 pray this, do you want to lead them in a prayer of salvation, or do you do you want me to, or even to return and give all their heart and soul, mind, yeah, and strength to the Lord? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. First of all, if you backslidden and if you lost your first love, yes, declare with me, Lord, today Amen. I choose to return and walk in the first love. Amen. I choose to love you as I first did with a new passion, a yes. renewal in my spirit in the name of Jesus. Lord, I seek to, I, I declare that I will follow you and know you in the power of the resurrection. Lord, I ask the Holy Spirit to just renew me, Yes. to renew me renew me to give me strength and a new passion yes. and desire for the things of you lord amen i choose to delight in you in the name of jesus and i choose to walk as a bride who is in her honeymoon the rest of my life with amen. you my lord and and then if you don't know jesus as your lord and savior just repeat with me, Lord Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord. I repent of my sins Amen. and I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And Lord, I just ask you to be with me, to baptize me with the Spirit. Yes. And Lord, I ask you, Father, Amen. to know you and to follow you in the power, power of, of the, the resurrection. resurrection. Amen. And Lord, I choose to never depart from the first love that you've given me. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'm just going to add to that, because in Psalm 119, 32, it says, you can actually pray and ask the Lord to enlarge our hearts. Yes. So, Father, we ask you, because this is all about love, that you not only fill us with the Holy Spirit, but then enlarge our hearts to be capable of the fullness of your love yes to first of all receive the fullness of your love for us and the forgiveness of our sins and how much you loved us and gave your very son jesus to die for us let that the fullness of that love dwell in us richly in our hearts and our minds father and wash us clean of the shame and guilt yes. of all the sins of our past for we repent of those sins in the name of jesus and we ask you to wash us clean by the blood of the lamb so now lord enlarge our hearts to have the zeal of the Lord, the passion of the Lord, the heart to love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and a heart to love our neighbors as ourselves, and even to love our enemies, Father. Amen. We ask for you to enlarge our hearts so that whenever you desire something in our lives and you desire more of us, that we will know it. And the zeal of the Lord will come overcome us and we will come running to you, running into your arms, Amen. even as the prodigal son did. And we thank you, Lord, that you will always receive us. And when we seek you with all our heart, you will... <laughs> we will find you because you promised that in Jesus name. Amen. 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 What a blessing returning to our first love and staying in it and finding our beloved. The word of God said, my love, my beloved is mine and I am his. Amen. amen. And this has been Jeremiah 29, 11 in your favorite 24 hour TV station, OCN. Please write to us at www.shalomshalom.org. Send us your prayer request. Amen. And your testimonies. Amen. God bless you. And remember to keep watching OCN on Roku and tuning in. And we love you. And remember, this is your 24-hour favorite TV station. God bless you. The Lord loves you. We love you. The OCN family loves Amen. you. And we'll see you next week. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Amen. Amen.